Okay, now let's move on to the laws of thermodynamics. So the first law has to do with energy. And if we have some fixed mass system, and we have some delta Q, which is an incremental heat addition, some delta W, which is an incremental work done on the system. And this is our system boundary. And everything outside the boundary is the surroundings. Then delta Q plus delta W equals DE. So this, these two things depend on process. Whereas this thing depends on the state of the fluid. And that's essentially the first law of thermodynamics. Now, in aerodynamics, we're basically concerned with three types of processes. So the first is the adiabatic process. Here, there's no heat transfer and delta Q is zero. B is a reversible process. This means that there's no dissipative phenomena. So that means no viscosity, no thermal conductivity effects, and no mass diffusion. Now, this is probably a different definition of reversible than you have from your past experience, but it's equivalent. It's just tailored to an aerodynamic perspective. Finally, we have the isentropic process, which is a NB, so an adiabatic reversible process. Now, for the reversible process, The work is equal to minus PdV. And so putting this into the first law, we can write that delta Q minus PdV equals the change in internal energy for a reversible process. And we'll just keep that one in mind. Next, let's talk a little bit about entropy and the second law. So the first law doesn't tell us anything about the permissible direction for a process. In instead, it's the second law that does this. So if we define entropy, ds, as ds equals delta Q for reversible process over temperature, where this delta Q rev is a reversible infinitesimal heat addition. Now, this is the part, one of the things that's the most difficult to understand about entropy is that despite that definition, entropy is a state variable or property. I'm not going to get into too much detail about that because this isn't, after all, a course on thermodynamics. Now another, perhaps more helpful way of defining entropy is instead of Defining it in terms of the reversible heat addition, we can define this as dq over t for any process plus irreversible entropy generation. So this delta q is now the actual heat added, 
and DS irreversible is the generation of entropy due to those dissipative phenomena within the system. And these always increase the entropy. So DS irreversible is greater than or equal to zero. Now if we combine these equations, which basically say that ds is greater than or equal to delta q over t, and if we have an adiabatic process for which delta q is zero, this says that ds is greater than or equal to zero, which is essentially a way of expressing the second law. Now, that's sort of very helpful from a, a qualitative understanding perspective, but the question remains of how we actually calculate entropy. To get at that, remember that for a reversible process, sorry, that the infinitesimal reversible heat transfer minus PdV, because this is the work, the reversal process is equal to the change in energy. And also, since we have ds is delta q rev over t, then if we combine these, what we get is t ds minus p dv equals dE. And another way of writing that is t ds equals dE plus p dv. And in addition, since the enthalpy change is dE plus PdV plus VdP from the product rule, then we get that TdS can also be expressed as dH minus VdP. These two equations that I've put in boxes are known as Gibbs equations. And note that along the way, we've dropped the, irrever the, the reversible heat addition is dropped out of the equations. So in fact, these apply to all processes. These are often called the combined first and second law. Now, if we write this for a perfect gas, we can write the ds is cv dt over t plus p dv over t. And ds is cp dt based on the entropy form over t, over t minus v dp over t. Now if we substitute for this equation pd equals rt, then what we get is ds equals dp dt over t minus r dp over p. And if we integrate between states 1 and state 2, then we get the S2 minus S1. With the integral from T1 to T2 of Cp dt over T minus integral from P1 to P2 of R dp over P. Now for our calor calorically perfect gas, where Cp and R are constant, Then what we get is that S2 minus S1, the change in entropy, is Cp, the natural logarithm of T2 over T1, minus R1 P2 over P1. And if we do the same process with the first of the Gibbs equations, then we get that S2 minus S1 is Cv 
1 t2 over t1 plus r1 v2 over v1. So these equations allow us to actually calculate changes in entropy and we see that the entropy is just another property or state variable and it's just a function of say the pressure and temperature or the specific volume and temperature. So ultimately entropy is no different than internal energy, pressure, temperature, enthalpy or any other property.